welcome. And thank you for joining us for the Mark Montclair Sunday morning worship experience. We hope you will be blessed by what you experience today. Whether you have joined us in the sanctuary or are worshiping with us online, feel free to worship and sing along as we are together in spirit with God and with one another. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. God is good, and we are glad to be here another Sunday. Amen. We want to invite you in to worship with us, those that are online, that are streaming with us, and those that are here in the sanctuary. We want to give God thanks because he has been so good. I want to invite the presence of the Lord with us on this morning, amen, so that he can have his way amen within our lives help me pray we're going to pray father in the name of jesus god we ask that you come into this service lord we ask that you bless us in the name of jesus encourage our hearts help us to know that this is the day that you have made and we need to rejoice and be glad in it we love you and we bless you we're trusting that you will touch each and every person that is watching us and that those people that are here in the sanctuary we ask that you touch them we ask that you give them and what they need that you supply each and every need that they may have we love you and we bless you on today god we love you in jesus name amen amen there is none like you. Hallelujah. We love you on today because if it wasn't for you, Lord, what would we do? And we realize that you are the author of everything. There is none like you. Hallelujah. Won't you sing with us? Amen. my heart. 
to worship. Hallelujah. Thank you. Because we bow down to you, Lord, because you've been so good. All we could do is just worship you on this Sunday. Hallelujah. Won't you worship with us? This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Won't you clap your hands I'm with us? Glad Aren't you glad that you're here and alive on today? Hallelujah. This is, this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. I will rejoice. We will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. For this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the 
the day, this is the day that the Lord has. Oh, this is the day, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, will rejoice. We will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad. Oh, oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. In my heart, I will enter his walls with praise. I will say, This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, for he has made me glad. 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 I will rejoice, for he has made me glad. Made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. This is the day. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. We will rejoice. Rejoice. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad. Oh, This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. One more time, this is, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad. Oh, oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. Now we invite you to learn about the Mark's God field work as we view the announcements on the screen. Here's what's going on at the Mark. Registration for the Mark's Mission U 2022 is now open. Classes are based on Luke chapter 13 and are available for adults, youth, and children. This year, there will be virtual and in-person learning opportunities. For more information, please call or email the church office. Stay connected. Want to find out about what's happening at St. Mark's? ways to become involved, or do you have a need or a concern? We want to stay in community with you. Fill out a connection card online so we have your current contact information and can reach out to you. Happy birthday to all those celebrating a birthday this month. We love you and we pray for your continued safety, health, and happiness. In this time of uncertainty, please remember the sick and shut in in your prayers and with a call or card. That's what's going on at the Mark. Good 
Welcome everyone online and in the sanctuary again. We are so very grateful to the greeters and ushers at the door, the AV ministry, musicians, and Tangi for helping making worship joyful, inspirational, and safe. We ask that you continue to keep Pastor Leslie and her family in your prayers as she follows the path God has prepared for her. We also ask for prayers for the Isaac and Saunders family, the celebration of life of Barbara Sanders, mother of Lenora Isaac, grandmother of Corey Isaac, and mother-in-law of Erskine Isaac will be held on Friday, July 1st at Christ Gospel Church Love Center at 15 James Street in Rio Grande, New Jersey. Viewing started at 10 a.m. and service at 11. A link will be provided for remote viewing. Please send flowers or cards to Razitia Funeral Home at Nine Hand Avenue, Cape May Courthouse, New Jersey, 08210. The family thanks you for all your prayers and love and offers of support. This announcement will also be shared to the church's email distribution list members via email. Please continue to be faithful stewards of the blessings God has given you. Please give generously for the Lord's love, the Lord loves a cheerful giver. We'll have a slide for the offertorial appeal and prayer. So it's up, online giving. Please give as God speaks to your heart. My apologies. Good morning. The introduction of Reverend Dr. Kelly U. Farrow. It is my honor to introduce to you Reverend Dr. Kerry U. Farrow, who is known in her community as preacher, educator, lecturer, mentor, social justice advocate, political voice and businesswoman. Reverend Dr. Kelly finished her bachelor's of science degree as a dual major in business and Bible, and then went on to pursue her master's of business administration with a concentration in human resource management. After completing her MBA, she graduated with her master's in divinity and earned a PhD in education with a concentration in higher education administration. Reverend Dr. Farrow, Circle Nation, has created and inaugurated several powerful pathways to prepare women and men for the ministry in which God has called them. Circle of Sacred Fire, a preacher intensive designed to prepare women of color in ministry. The Kelly U. Farrow Institute and Phoenix Circle for Women and Men and the Just for Men Circle. Dr. Farrow serves as Minister of Discipleship at Double Love Experience Church in Brooklyn. And she is an associate minister at Convent Avenue Baptist Church in Harlem. Please join me this morning in welcoming Dr. Farrow, who will deliver God's word 
following the choir selections. Thank you. Anointing, praise the Lord. Don't we want the Holy Spirit to just fall on us? The power of God, amen, so that we're able to do things in his name, to his glory, anointing, fall on us. Chasing after you. Come on, musicians. Minister Kilpatrick and these two wonderful men. Let's go.
No matter what I have to do, hey, cause I need you more and more. I'm chasing after you, no matter what I have to do, cause I need you more and more, yeah, yeah. Help me sing, I'm chasing after you, no matter what I have to do, cause I need you. More and more, I'm chasing after, I'm chasing after you, no matter what I have to do, cause I need you more and more. I'm ready. 
Check one, two, one, two. Amen. Good morning. How's everybody doing this morning? Isn't it a wonderful time to be in the house of the Lord just one more time? The, the singers let us know we're chasing after God, right? More and more. Hallelujah. It is nice to be in the house of the Lord. I welcome those. Amen. Thank you. Um, Pastor Leslie is a dear friend of mine, and I am grateful to be here. Um, of, we call our, our tribe of preacher women the sisterhood. And so when the sisterhood calls, you drop everything for the sisterhood and come. And so when Reverend Leslie called and said, hey, sis, I need you on a Sunday. Okay, sis, I got you. And so I was here when she, I think, first was installed. Um, and it's nice to be back, and thank you for your loving kindness. Um, I just want to also thank for those who may be watching in our virtual space, my two church homes in the space of Double Love Experience Church, the most dopest church in Brooklyn, where we preach the love-centered joy of Jesus the Christ through social justice and in, in Double Love, Black Lives Matter. And so we are a socially justice-oriented church and the historical black church up on the hill in the person of the Convent Avenue Baptist Church. Today, actually, Convent um, is having Women's Day. And so another one of the sisterhood is over there. So I had called her and was like, sis, we need a Women's Day preacher. Can you come? And so Reverend Maria is like, I got you, sis, I got you. We thank God for those who just show up and, and be community in our lives. Um, I also want to thank my family and the Circle of Sacred Fire, which is a, a tribe of women all across the country. We got 250 plus strong and we have about 25 men who joined us as allies and so we are grateful for what we call Circle Nation in the house on today. Hmm. Well, let's get into the word, shall we? So the scripture this morning is coming from Psalms chapter 30 verses 1 through 5 and then we're going to skip down to verses 12 right? So Psalms chapter 30, verses 1 through 5, and then verse 12. And if it's your custom, if you may stand um, during the reading of the word, and if not, that is fine. You can also sit. Um, here is what we say in the New Revised Standard Version. 
I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and did not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cry to you for help and you have healed me. O Lord, you brought me up, my soul from Sheol, restored me to life from among those gone down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, O you his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, his favor for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night. But joy comes in the morning. And verse 12, so that my soul may praise you and not be silent. Oh, Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. Amen. You may have your seats. Will you join me in a word of prayer? Lord God, we thank you, we praise you, and we honor you for being the all-giving, all-knowing, all-sustaining God. Lord God, our soul gives you thanks. Our heart gives you praise. And on today, Lord God, I just ask that you be with us here at St. Mark's, that your spirit rest, rule, and abide in this place. Lord God, hide me behind the cross so that people of God will get the word of God because the people of God deserve the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, our thought for meditation this morning is winter is coming. Winter is coming. Winter most times is thought of as a season that brings harsh and icy and cold winds. And for those of us that live in this tri-state area up here in this, this not too far from Canada weather, right? We can get a little, little cold. The snows and the rains and the icy conditions. But for some reason, we also forget that when the snow comes in, when winter comes in, it gets rid of the bugs and mosquitoes. I don't like the bugs. I don't like the mosquitoes. It clears the air of allergens for those of you who suffer with allergies. And even for those of us who may live in the city, the noise of the city gets a little bit less because most of us are indoors opposed to outdoors trying to avoid the cold. It lessens the muggy, bad hair days when it's too humid. It's, it's milder and softer in condition. It brings the pronouncement that change is coming. With that pronouncement, you begin to smell the warm aroma of cinnamon and nutmeg. And for some of y'all, pumpkin, I, I'm over the pumpkin stuff, but some of y'all like pumpkin. Down in the city bakeries, you can smell the coffee shops and the lattes. And in the streets, you switch from summer dresses and, and cool linen white to cozy, maybe a little, some Uggs on your feet, a little turtleneck. But you get ready for the change of season. You begin to desire comfort food, but let me say this. I've been desiring comfort food all through COVID. COVID is, can I get some macaroni and cheese every day? Can I get some collard greens? Can I get some mashed potatoes with gravy every day? I'm, that's just me. I'm, I'm not saying nobody else is looking for it. But in the winter time, typically... We get some fried chicken. We have holiday parties and festive things going on. You wearing your puffy jackets. It's chilly outdoors because you know that winter is coming. And so you are preparing for the change, or are you? Winter doesn't only have to be, though, harsh and bitter winds. It, it doesn't have to be insufferable conditions, but it can also be a force that is powerful for restoration. From the heat of life, from challenges, it can allow us to slow down. Winter can offer deliverance from oppressive mindsets and stagnates our goals and our assignments and fuels that negative energy sometimes. Winter can say, the scenery of your life is changing and things are about to get a little bit better. Winter can be fruitful, fateful, and fulfilling. If we look at it from an angle where winter bringing a need of change of season in our lives and a, a new wind, a better direction, we gain better perspective, we, we know where we're headed, we, we hope for an idea of something new, a manifested destiny, a fateful destiny, a change, a purpose, a restoring. We're back to being fulfilled. What I'm saying is winter doesn't have to be what we think it is or what it looked like. It can be for our good. A season we thought that came with a bunch of severe challenges and changes and harsh winds, God can use to specifically select and change you into the next season of your life. Come on, somebody. To the next goal, to your next level in your relationship with God. Sometimes winter is just what we need to get to where we're going. 
Winter is a discipline. We need to level up so we can have what they call that glow up. Winter is the mighty force that represents the things of God using new things and new seasons to get us where we need to go. Winter is and always has been, it offers up to show God in your life. Everything can't be the same all the time. Listen, COVID came in here and wore us out, but winter is coming. And so the season is changing. If it's only for a moment, the cold, harsh, bitter winds resembles the correction of God sometimes, but also the gentleness of God. Discipline brings self-control. Remember, I mentioned some comfort food the other day. So when summertime comes, you see what all that comfort food then did. And now you got to get right, touch two people, right? I know she's like, you, got, you might have to get in the gym a little bit more. You might have to walk around the block a little bit more because discipline brings self-control, right? The, the rough bitterness of the wintry snow is the tweak that God gives to snatch us back and get our attitudes back in line. If, if we become a little bit too complacent, if, if we haven't been as diligent as we should be, God says time is changing. Those insufferable conditions winter brings, I hear the Spirit saying to the church, can bring about the fruit of righteousness in your lives, in our lives, if we let it, if we don't kick against the lesson. Because, you know, if we kick against the lesson, then the lesson comes back. And, and listen, sometimes the lesson come back is a little bit more painful than the first time. We wish we had taken the lesson the first time. And if for some of us, we can find liberation and freedom. The discomfort the season brings can make us anxious, but it can be used to shake off the grit and the, and the, and the harshness on our minds and our heart and find newness and, and, and inspiration where there might have been mediocrity and sadness. Listen, joy and sorrow can hold in the same container if you know what God is doing in your life, right? So the changes can redirect your focus. It can get us back on track. It can provide deliverance, power, healing, and discernment, which are some of the very things that God wants to provide desperately, but winter has to come for those things. Winter is coming, thus the million dollar question is, are you prepared for winter? Are you ready for God to take shape in your life? Are you, are you trying to do this thing all on your own? Do you want to give God the driver's seat in the car? Or do you want to keep driving and tell God, I got this, I'm going to take control of this? Are you trying to begrudge the correction and the call on your life and only want the favor of the call? Because sometimes we want all the, you got a heart, you got a car, you got a car, you got a house, but we don't want the correction. All right. Oh, that was crickets. I ain't think. Hey, some say, say out your amen or something. I, I'm just saying because let me stay right here right now. There is no favor of God without obedience to the word and the work of God. There is no favor without repentance, no favor without a changing of your life and doing things God's way. So I'm sorry to, I don't necessarily want to come and hurt nobody's feelings this morning, but the naming and claiming, you get this, you get that without having to give God something in return. It's not going to happen. I will t Look, I'm not going to tell you to spin around three times. You know, the preachers sometimes they had the cloth with the water and the oil, and you're supposed to put it on your head and you pass out. And no, that's not it. <laughs> that's not it. We have to let God move in our life. We have to yield to winter. What I'm saying is this. What we do in faith, the work we do in faith, that what brings God favor. The scripture says that it is the faith of you that moves mountains, right? If, if we let life lead us to the saving grace of God, it changes the direction of the winds in our lives. It's embracing that correction that brings the joy in the morning. So the scripture said that weeping endures for a night, suffering, hardship, <sighs> in COVID, child monkeypox. For a night, and joy comes in the morning. Listen, I had a conversation with one of my girlfriends the other day, and we were talking about um, it was it was we were talking about Good Friday sermons and and Gethsemane, and and she had admonished that before Christ got to Calvary, there was some suffering happening. And I said, you know, when we when we talk about that, we don't really talk about how in Gethsemane and Christ is praying, there was a level of anguish that Christ went through right before Calvary. So we preached Calvary, we preached the resurrection, but we don't preach the anguish and the suffering before the resurrection. And sometimes your journey 
before glory is suffering and anguish. But nobody wants to talk about that. Sometimes it is fear. Sometimes it is frustration. Look, there are no brave encounters. There is no courageousness if you haven't overcome fear, frustration, confusion, depression, oppression. That's when you have become courageous, right? Because you had to overcome something. But so sometimes I'll... I, we struggle in the church to talk about the entirety of the journey. And we might give folks a false impression. So then they think God is a genie. No, ma'am, no, sir. There are some things that happen to work out the fruit of righteousness in your life. So what I'm saying is faith in, in God. Faith brings favor, right? The, the, the call and the grace on your life because the rest of it is just smoke and mirrors, the, mess of, the rest of it is illusions and lies. The, the rest of it is a magic show. The reality of serving in God, the reality of this Christian life, the, the reality of getting through death and losses and grief and, and cancer and, and all manners of oppression and, and money acting funny, the reality is in all of that, you still got to go through all of that to get to where you're going in God. You can't jump over to circumvent it because then what would you learn? How would you learn how to care for someone? How would you learn grace and mercy? How would, you, how would you receive grace and mercy? How do you know how to be gentle if you haven't had some harshness? I'm not going to say no more because y'all looking at me like, all right, preacher, I hear you, I hear you, I hear you. We've been endured for a night, but the joy of the Lord comes in the morning. David knew that all the well about weeping for the night and prayed that God would not take his child, right, when he had the child with Bathsheba. But listen, David, he sat in sackcloth and ash. Sometimes we lament for a season. And then when God said, no, this is my judgment, David got up. He put on fresh clothes. He asked for some food. And the servant said, well, you lamented and you prayed the whole time that, that the child wouldn't die. And now that the Lord has taken the child, you want to get up and go on? David said, it's the Lord's judgment. I am, I am satisfied with what the Lord has done. Listen, when you have done some things and the Lord has provided correction, get yourself up. <laughs> it might hurt. Put on some fresh clothes. Get, get you some new makeup, girl. And get it to the table and sat down. That's it. That's all. Because the Lord's, the Lord is not just fair. The Lord is just. And so when the Lord's justice rolls out, the Lord's sovereignty rolls out, it is a reflection of how we might need to look at repentance, but also we sense the Lord's grace. So here in the Psalms, we, he, David acknowledges all the well that while God brings correction, if you endure because God is trying to help you, then you'll have eternal joy and in the morning and not temporary happiness, right, but eternal joy. The Psalm is a prayer of thanksgiving. David is giving thanks because he knows full well it is the Lord that has afflicted him, right? After David acted the fool, can we touch two people say David sometimes acted the fool? I don't know if y'all read the Old Testament, but sometimes to me it reads like a Spanish novella. I'd be like, well, what in the snaggle fraggle is happening here? Okay. Um, I mean, <laughs> you know, we, we, we've heard the things that David's done, right? And so David sowed his seed in the wind, and it reaped a whirlwind, basically. However, there was another side of David that was tender and apt to repent and apt to own what he has done. And so when you do that, God comes down a little bit more gently, right? There is still correction, but there's correction wrapped in grace and mercy. So with truth in his heart and experience under his belt, he declares the anger of the Lord is only for a moment, but it is passing, amen? It is fleeting. Basically, he's saying, listen, the Lord will get mad at you, but only angry for a moment. But God's favor, my, 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 his favor is for your entire life. Hallelujah. So God, I thank God that God is not an Indian giver. God don't give us a little grace and take it on back. God gives us more grace and more grace and more grace. But that grace is to provide us space to change. Let's just sit in that for a moment. Let's be pass it too quickly. Because sometimes we, we, we look at God from the perspective of only correcting and harshness. But God also provides more grace for change. Even while the Lord is angry, God still loves us. Even if the Lord is disappointed, God still loves us. The, the, the Lord doesn't remove love from us because God is disappointed. So sometime winter comes and you'll feel the bitter cold wind harsh and, and it scrape across your cheek and it's like, ooh, it's, it's, it's harsh out here today. 
But when you're ready to get back with God, God is always ready with open arms to get back with you. The, the winter might be grim, but the winter can also be cleansing. That sting that some of us sense when, when the weather changes, that is the, the, the thing that says, okay, it's time to get back on your assignment. Okay, there's something that you have to do. I know, shouts David from the scriptures, I know winter is coming because my life speaks volumes on the way one person can mess up. Because David ain't the only one that's messed up. If some of us open our books right in here and our little story and our novels of our lives, we have fully messed up as well. But the Bible says that each time we have fallen short, if we are, we are apt to repent and we are apt to confess our wrongs before God, the Lord is faithful to remove this anger against us. So David lets us know, don't hide your face from God or you won't feel the presence of God. Sometimes when we do something, we might feel kind of bad. We might feel like, I'm, I, I'm too ashamed to go back to doing and serving. The Lord says, don't hide your face from me. I'm here to help you reveal what you're going through, and I will be right here to help you. The key to understanding this thought is in Psalms. Even, even God's anger can be favorable, but it produces repentance and positive change. Winter is coming. So rejoice in challenges. Paul said, count it all joy. Now, sometimes I be like, Paul, shut up. Because I can't count it all joy. I'm tired, right? Sometimes you feel like this is just too deep for me. However, the, what I have learned and what I'm still learning is that those challenges produce the change of character in me. It produced the change of attitude in me. And then when I look back, over the six of because you know what's always clearer when you look back. When I look back from whence I came from, I was like, you know what, the challenge wasn't that bad. And I came out on a different side, and I don't smell like the smoke and the burnt ash that I went through. Come on, touch two people. Because some of us have, we have been through some things, but God has restored us so that we don't look like what we've been through. So we do rejoice in challenge, right? We do rejoice in the fragrant fruit of righteousness. We do rejoice. Because we are blessed. Something new is coming because that's not the, po the listen, something new is coming and, and, something, and something fresh is on your life. And with all of the alternative facts, situations here in this moment, uh, we, uh, listen, the United States of America is making me tired. If I turn on the news one more time, actually, I had stopped watching the news for a while, but then you also have to turn off your phone because you get flashes on your phone and, and, I'm not going to necessarily call out too many things from this past week, but I don't understand where we're going sometimes. I don't, I don't understand the mindsets of folks. We, we are in racially tense times. I feel like somebody needs to go back and get Martin and Malcolm and them because we, we have a problem in here, right? The, 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 the decisions and the decay. Ah, that's the word. The decay that is breaking out in D.C. David admonished from the scriptures, I have extolled you, O Lord, so that you will draw me up and won't let my foes rejoice over me. Listen, if we think about D.C. and we realize our foes, I thank God that they won't rejoice over me because I don't really, even though we don't have all the understanding, when I think about the decay and I think about extolling God, my foes will not rejoice over me. When I think about the things that I have been through, that where I'm going and where I have come from, I thank God that my foes will not rejoice over me. I thank God that I will not be afraid. I thank God that you will not have control over my body. I thank God that you will not have control over my life because as I extol God, my foes will not rejoice over me. I feel the Holy Ghost in that moment. You cannot take my life because Christ has given me life. You cannot have my thoughts because the God has given me my thoughts. My enemies will not rejoice over me, my God, today. I, I thank you, God, that we have resurrection power. I thank you, God, that we have direction and deliverance. I thank you, God, that as I extol you, you draw me up, and my foes, those crazy lawmakers, those folks who don't understand urban situations, those who don't understand that some of our seniors got to choose between food and rent and medicine, my foes will not rejoice over me. 
my, 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 my cupboards will not be empty. My refrigerator will not have lack. My bills will be paid because my foes will not rejoice over me. Because mm. when you don't understand the thing, I'll say this, when you don't understand the thing, just go to God and rejoice. When you don't have the full understanding about it, that's okay. Just go to God and rejoice because God is going to take care of the gap. God is going to take care of the lack. God is going to take care of the confusion. God is going to answer all the questions. My grandmama used to say, just keep on living. It's going to be answered by and by. And I waited for by and by for a minute. What I got here this moment in this space, by and by, just got answered. The, my foes will not rejoice over me. So don't give up. Keep on living. Y'all want to know how God, listen, y'all want to know how David got to the place of lifting God up through tribulation? You want to know how God, you want to know how David shifted through persecution, rejection, affliction, frustration, anger, being sick and tired of being sick and tired? Listen, hmm. once I get to a place where I can fall on my knees and throw my head back and say, thank you, God. That's how you get through it. Because you're not going to always have all the answer. But my foes will not. Come on out of here, devil. My foes will not rejoice over me. Then I know God. I can feel God working in my life and pressing the oil out of me. Because mm, sometimes you might just want to get a frying pan and slap somebody. But when the oil works over your life, you are a little bit calmer. Because then you can taste and see mm, that the Lord is good. You can, you can feel the Lord working in your life. And, and listen, if I just had about five people in here that just want to bless God for the Lord working in your life, for someone seeing what God is doing in your life. Because some of us didn't wake up on this side of glory today. So the fact that we got the use of our limbs and as the same season saying, saying, I'm in my right mind. Because I thought I was about to lose my mind on Friday. But on Sunday, all my hope is in God and my faith too. So with my hands lifted up and, and my heart filled with praise, at the moment God snatches me up and draws me unto him. And I can rejoice that my enemies... When winter has come for my life, I am thankful. I have endured the season. We prepare for the season. We go through some hardship, but we should be thankful. Sometimes sorrow is joy's forerunner. I'm going to say it again before we miss that. Sometimes sorrow is joy's forerunner. Which is why David said, weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Which is, I was glad, which is why David also said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Because there is a time for sackcloth and ash. Sometime there is lamenting. I'll be fully transparent. When I heard about the Roe versus Wade, I had to sit down for a second. And I had to lament on Friday. And not just for, not... <laughs> Let me say this, not just for how it would affect me or my children. I lamented for all the men and women in the 40s, 50s, and 60s that did some work to get some of these civil rights things put in place. I wondered about our seniors who was on the marches and who was out there with Martin. And how does it feel to have your work and sacrifices undone because they thought they were doing it for us. My grandmama had, a, she, she was out there with Martin Luther King. I wondered what it said to our communities. So I wasn't just lamenting for where we're headed. I was lamenting for what we are or what we may have lost. But God is still on the throne. Mm. God is still on the throne. So we, 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 we come back to our good sin selves. Because I almost took a flight to something or a bus or something to D.C. and, and be out there pro I saw I saw Auntie Maxine, you know, Maxine Ward on TV. I was like, I'm coming! I'm coming! Because social justice is in my heart, right? Because the things that we do matter. And the ways that we show up matter. David said, don't just make a declaration, but make a proclamation. I was glad when they said unto me, glad, be glad for the crazy situation because it turns you back to God. Be glad that 
I don't really get this, but it will give me some answer if I fall on my knees. Be glad the money's a little funny, so when I get more, I will appreciate and give more, right? Be glad that the Lord shows me that the Lord shows up in my life mighty and strong regardless of my circumstance. Everything doesn't have to be just right, but God is always faithful every time faithfulness my 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 we don't talk about the fruit of faithfulness all the time but faithfulness my 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 you learn that he might not come when you want him but God is always on time it might not look the way you want it to look but God is still working it out in your favor but God just requires you hmm, to show up so listen there's a few things in the scripture I want to I want to look at right fast, right? When winter comes, remember to be vigilant and faithful in your service. Winter sometime comes and it makes us feel like giving up, right? It makes us feel like it, it makes you a little bit tired, right? But be, remain vigilant and faithful in your service. Don't give up on God because God hasn't given up on you. Don't get frustrated. Don't quit because it's not all going your way. Stay and deal with the harshness of the season and be watchful for the things ahead. And know that it's only for a season. Things change every single day. God is working it out for your good because winter is coming and winter is not coming to harm right? Winter is here to bring awareness to the things that are going on around you. The things that happened this week, the things that's been happening in the last year and a half, the change in the presidents, the, 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 the Black Lives Matter movements, all of those things are happening to bring awareness to the things that are going on, to sharpen our focus, right? To, to get us to our next destination, to make us be more aware and concentrate on the things that we have to. Don't consider the losses, because in God there is no losses, right? Somebody mm, needs to know that it may look like we keep losing, but we not because in God, we just keep on winning. We just keep on winning. Rest in the affliction. Another thing we remember when winter comes, rest in the affliction. So sometimes we want to get rid of it. We want, we want to go have emergency surgery, if you will. Sometimes that's not always the requirement. If it's come to bring us our focus and our awareness to be sharpened, sometimes we have to sit still in it. So often we want to run from the hurt. We want to, we, but the hurt teaches us that God loves us in a different, more intimate way. If David cursed the hurt, he could have never reached verse 2, and that says, for when I cried, you healed me. So sometimes the, faint, the pain that resides in our heart, resides in our mind, resides in our mortal body, we can't get to the declaration, the affirmation, the testimony, I cried, I suffered, I hurt, but Lord, you heard and you healed me. In the, in the middle of that transition of the hurt and God healing, there's connective power. You know that God is real because I had a pain in my mortal body. I had, whether it be in my heart, in my feelings, and I cried out unto the Lord, and the Lord heard me, and the Lord healed me. Somebody's going to catch it on the way home. Some of us feel re resentful because we have a little arthritis, so we feel resentful because everything doesn't look the way it needs, so we feel resentful. Don't be resentful because when you cry out, the Lord is going to answer, and you can say, at one point, I felt like I was under the rug. At one point, I felt like I was down. But I cried out to God. And the almighty God and my finite self mm, answered me. I thought I was counted out. I did not feel like getting out the house, much less getting out of bed, much less making the church today, much less going to work tomorrow. But if I stop fighting, then I can't. I can't say God is my healer. Mm. There's something about trusting God in season and finding out when you're, affliction be, when you're afflicted that you can rest under the wings of the most high. You can gain the power to say, devil, you tried it, but God healed me. Mm. Devil, you thought you were going to take my life in the ninth hour, but in the tenth hour. God heals me. I had some friends who got COVID and they said they felt like they were on their deathbed, but they cried out 
And within the next 30 seconds, God healed me. That is a testimony that God is still doing things in the earth realm. If we cannot see the Lord in the trees and in the change of the seasons, you can see the Lord in your testimony. Well, there's another thing, and I'm going to take my seat. Let your soul praise God forever. And no matter what space you're in, no matter how you're feeling, when winter comes, it removes the sackcloth and ash mm -hmm, so that you don't smell like smoke, so you don't look like what you've been through. Somewhere in this journey, it's possible that we get burned. Let's just let's, let's be honest. Some, sometime we get hurt. We feel disappointed. But the Lord takes the ash of our lives and turns it into dancing and joy. Look, in, look at what David said in verse 11 and 12. David says, you have turned my morning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy so that my soul may praise you and not be silent. Oh, Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. Again, in this particular scripture, there's a lot of transitional movements that get you from one place to the, ne to the other so that we see that it's not just always about joy and it's not just always about sorrow. They both can live in the same container, and when they do, you have the power to praise God. Once you come through the jagged edges and spaces of your life, God can restore you by his tender mercies and your soul will desire to praise God forever. Because listen, we could have been dead. Our enemies could have taken us out. The sickness in our bodies that we wrestle with, the, uh, listen, all, all the things that even sometimes it's even anxiety to go outside or take the bus or the train because it's real out here, right? But when... When, when you sit and count your days, you, you, you become remorseful in heart and restored in favor and grace. This season may present some challenges, no doubt. But it's the wind of God that's blowing the dust off of our lives. When you come, when you, when, when, when you announce winter is coming, sometimes it reveals the mercy of God. Sometimes it reveals the judgment of God. Listen, check to see where you are. Sometimes it's mercy. Sometimes it's correction. Do I, do I have any Game of Thrones watches in here? Did any of y'all used to watch Game Thank you, sis. I appreciate Thank you, sis. I appreciate I see you. Any, the, so I, I got into Game of Thrones late, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm glad I'm not in here by myself. Because part of the thought for this particular meditation, Winter is Coming, came from Game of Thrones, right? So Winter is Coming was, for those of you who wasn't watchers, um, Game of Thrones um, was the model of one of the great houses in the story, the House Stark, right? And so the father would teach the children that winter is coming and in winter we must prepare because the lone wolf dies but the pack survives come on touch y'all hear me then there the lone wolf survive the lone wolf dies but the pack survives and so when we're looking at harsh days ahead when we're when we're looking at where we're going it is the body of Christ that helps us to survive these situations so do not forsake the fellowship of the saints do not forsake getting together with people do not forsake talking to folks on the phone because when winter is coming one you must prepare and two the lone wolf dies but the pack survives so listen there was a part in the story where rob stark the eldest brother went to avenge his father because his father had been killed. Y'all listen to me here. His father had been killed, so he called his, what they call his bannermen, and they went off to war. So one of the spies from the, the other houses he was fighting against, they found them spying in the camp, so they brought them to Rob Stark. Rob said, let him go. And his bannerman was like, no, no, we should keep him. We should, we should find out what he knows. He's been watching our plans. He said, no, no, let him go. Because I want him to go back and tell our enemies, winter is coming. Oh, y'all not hearing me today. When, when the father dies, uh -huh, we, we want to send word back to the devil that winter is coming. No, don't, don't keep him here. Let him go back and announce to the other houses that winter is coming. Because when all of your enemies are camped around about you and on all sides, you have have to have a motto in your life that says winter is coming. We, when you get past the hard times and you get past the stress and you get past the struggle and it looks like the enemy's about to take you out, you better have a message. You better have a family motto. You better tell the enemy winter is coming. No, I'm not going to hold on to this one right here. I'm going to let this one go because I need someone to go and say, my God is bigger than your God. <laughs> Come on, somebody. I need somebody to go and announce that cancer is not going to take my life. <laughs> I need somebody to go and announce 
that you can't beat black Jesus. Come on, somebody. I need somebody to say, listen, you know and I know that winter is coming and my God is well able to keep me from falling. My God is well able to keep me from stumbling. My God is able to keep me over and over and over again. I might be tired. I might have had some struggle. I might have had some joy. But God, whether I have struggle or whether I have joy, God is still well able. Winter is coming. Come on, somebody, and tell D.C. Y'all can do whatever y'all want to do. Y'all can try it, but winter is coming for your house because my God fights my battles, <laughs> and he wins. Wait a minute. My God fights my battles, and he wins. I'm not with a losing God. We are on the winning team. And so when something happens in your life that you're just unsure about, announce to the devil winter is coming hmm. winter is coming winter is coming for the damage in your heart winter is coming for that crazy on the job winter is coming to take your enemies out winter is coming to let loose the hostages winter is coming for that hatefulness that evilness that thing is going to pervade in the world winter is coming for poverty winter is coming for black lives you will not keep killing us in the streets winter is coming winter is coming you will not abuse little black boys and little black girls winter is coming you will not keep us separated from our families winter is coming and it's blowing in the right direction ah oh, hallelujah is blowing in the right direction. Do I have anybody feel the wind of God in here this morning? Winter is coming and it's blowing in the right direction. If you got five minutes left on this planet in this room, you need to bless God for the things that God has blown off your life and the things that God is blowing off you right now. Come on, don't fool me now, y'all. We got about three seconds left to say thank you, God. Hallelujah. Bless your name, oh God. Bless your name, oh God. From the rising of the sun and to the going down of the same. God, you're worthy. God, you're worthy. We thank you for keeping us, God. And we thank you for blessing us, God. And we thank you, Lord God, that you've taken the winter of our life and switched it on the enemy. Eh? And that now we are in victory. Yeah? We done been through some stuff, but we don't look like what we've been through. Come on in here. We thank you, Lord God, for switching it on our enemies. We thank you, Lord God, that we will, we will, we will survive. And not only survive, we will thrive. Hallelujah. This is not the end of the matter. This is only the beginning. So if you're tired, take a little rest. But get back on out here tomorrow and do it one more time because we need each other. It's the lone wolf that dies, but it's the pack. Eh? It's the body of Christ. It's the pack that survives. Lord God, we thank you for this time together. We thank you, Lord God, for the outpouring of your word. We thank you that you manifested yourself in here today. And Lord God, we ask that you, I ask that you bless these, your people. I ask that you bless, Lord God. I ask that you keep, Lord God. I ask that you restore, Lord God. I ask that you give us everything that we need, Lord God, to be healthy and well and whole. I ask that you bless our hearts, Lord God. I ask that you bless our minds, Lord God. I ask that you bless our mortal bodies, Lord God, so that we be healthy, well and whole. We thank you, Lord God, that the winter has come for our lives, but it has not destroyed us. We thank you, Lord God, that winter has come to restore us what we need to be restored so we can get out here and do it a little bit more. We thank you, Lord God, for your faithfulness, your goodness, your kindness, and your mercy. Lord God, we thank you that you are winter. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.
Thank you so much, Dr. Farrell. Won't you give her another hand? Yeah. Praise God. <clears throat> Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to ask her to come back and dismiss us. And uh, we want to thank you all for coming. And again, thank you so much, Dr. Farrell. If you don't mind just giving us the benediction. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. If all hearts and minds are clear, let us stand. Now, Lord God, to the one that is able to keep us from falling, the only wise God, be glory and power and dominion forever and ever. And all of the people of God said, amen. 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 And amen. Go in peace.